Hey there YouTube, this is VargasXX78 uh, with another collection pick up video. This time sharing with you guys all the stuff that I've gotten this uh, throughout the month of January in the brand new 2014. So lots of diverse things to talk about this time around. Uh, so first off, it's been a while since I've bought an action figure. Mostly because of uh, space issues, I, I can't buy any action figures. But I'm a huge Simpsons fan. Anything that I can find with the Simpsons or Simpsons related, I'll pick up. So I went to a swap meet and this lady had this guy on a box. Just, you know, he was there. And uh, I got a Philip J. Fry action figure. And uh, Futurama, I consider the spin-off of The Simpsons. They do make reference. And there's going to be a Simpsons episode if it hasn't already happened and I missed it, where Futurama's gonna cross over with The Simpsons. So, uh, yeah, I picked this guy up. I really like the articulation that the guy has. His hands move, his legs move. It's more articulated than the uh, Simpson toys that I own. And uh, I got this one real, really cheap. The lady didn't know who he was, apparently, and she just wanted to get rid of it. So I'm hoping I can track down Bender. Uh, or Dr. Soidberg. Um, but yeah, I really, really like Futurama. And his faces, uh, I mentioned this to my girlfriend, his faces showcased a lot in Facebook. Um, so yeah, it has the Matt Groening signature on the back. So yeah, I thought it was a really cool Simpsons related collectible that I couldn't pass up. So yeah, I thought it was cool. Uh, also in the swap meet, my girlfriend got for me. Living Shakespeare. Uh, this is a really interesting collectible that she got for me. Uh, it basically the whole the plays of William Shakespeare uh, comes with a booklet that has the um, the, the 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 play for Shakespeare, and then it has this thing, which is if you're younger, you're not gonna know what the hell this is, but. Before there were MP3s or even CDs, there were LPs. And uh, this, uh, I don't own an LP player. My parents do, so if I when I go visit them next time, I'm going to take this with me and I'm going to see if this thing will play. But it's basically the, the, the place of Shakespeare in audio and readable form. Now... This, doing a little bit of research, is part of a three-set piece. There's three pieces of it. Uh, this box is supposed to contain Hamlet, King Lear, Macbeth, Othello, and Anthony and Cleopatra. But clearly, with the first one that I took out, is A Midsummer's Night Dream. Uh, so I, this set is not complete, but... Still, my girlfriend got this for an insanely cheap price, and as a collectible, just because it has the place of Shakespeare, it's really cool. So now all I have to do is uh, go to my parents' house, see if their LP player still works, and play one of these suckers. But really, really cool collectible that I really appreciate my girlfriend got for me. Because, uh, yeah, Shakespeare, uh, it's Shakespeare, so really, really thankful for that. I don't think I'm really thankful for uh, the very first book I ever read was The Little Prince. Uh, read it because of a school project. The second book that I read, because my dad saw that I got into reading, uh, he let me borrow his copy. And then he had it uh, saved somewhere. He was doing some uh, some cleaning and he found it again. And uh, he gave me his original copy of White Fang. Now, I bought uh, an English version of White Fang, but... That thing seems like it was edited. Uh, I remember some parts that were longer, and in that book I bought was really, really cut down. Uh, but my dad gave me his original copy, and uh, I'm so thankful that he did, because this is, this is a very nostalgic book for me, and uh, the fact that it's his original copy that I read way back when, and... Uh, he handed it out to me. I, I really, really appreciate this uh, and that he did. So um, I'm hoping that when and if I ever have kids, I'll be able to pass this down to them and let them borrow it too and get them into reading. 
but this for me is a very important addition to my vault because of the history and the emotional meaning that it has for me. So, and it's an old book. It's it's surprisingly held up, but the pages are all brown. I'm also thinking it might be from where it was stored, but uh, yeah, really, really important addition to my collection. Uh, also picked up uh, Travels of Thelonius, which is about this world uh, where animals are smart and some of them actually talk. And this chipmunk uh, gets stranded on an island, that, an abandoned human island, and he encounters all these other animals that live there. Basically, he's curious to know what happened with the humans, because there's no humans here. And it's a very interesting book, because it's, it's, it's part graphic novel and part book. So I thought this was really interesting, and it ends in a cliffhanger. So now I want to track down the other books. Um, a niece of ours went to Hollywood, and she was nice enough to bring me two books. Uh, both are autographed by the illustrator and the writer. Uh, the first one that you got for me is Discovering the Golden Compass, a guide to Philip Pullman's Dark Materials. And this is uh, a book that basically explains the life of Philip Pullman and uh, his Dark Materials trilogy. And only the Golden Compass got adapted to a, a movie. And from what I've read here, I've never read the Golden Compass, but... From what I read here, that movie was butchered. They took a lot out of that movie or adapted it very poorly. Uh, but this was really interesting, really interesting. And I want to pick up the uh, Dark Materials trilogy. Uh, the other book uh, you got for me is Passport to Narnia, which also explains the life of C.S. Lewis, uh, his friendship with uh, J.R.R. Tolkien, and how Tolkien actually tried to convince him not to release this because of the religious overtones that the thing has. The, uh, this book mentions that uh, Aslan is uh, the representation of Jesus in Narnia. And I don't own any of the Narnia books, uh, but after reading this, I want to get into it. I want to read Narnia. Uh, and it also has the, uh, the chronological, the recommended chronological order that you should read the Narnia books. So, yeah, uh, if my niece is watching this, you know who you are. Uh, thank you so much for getting these books. I'm done with this one. I finished reading this one, and I enjoyed the heck out of it. And I'm halfway through this one, and I'm enjoying this one as well. So, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for for getting these books for me. Uh, me and my girlfriend went to uh, Big Lots, and uh, Big Lots had a whole bunch of new video games on sale, and... If you were a membership, if you have the membership card, you would get 30% off. So I bought more than I should have, but uh, I thought it was a great deal for new video games. So for the Nintendo DS, I picked up Pokemon Ranger Guardian Signs. Uh, still playing Pokemon X, and right now I have Poke Fever. So uh, Pokemon Black and Black 2 are really expensive. So this will tide me over until I can save some money, and I got it. I didn't pay ten ten dollars for this. I got it really cheap, and it's a brand new game, so it, it'll have the Club Nintendo code thing inside. So I, I'll get some extra coins for that. Uh, for my girlfriend, I picked up Plants vs Zombies. She has Plants vs Zombies one and two on the iPad that she owns, but she wanted this one too because it has some uh, additional features that the iPad one doesn't. So pick that one up for her. Also pick up. For myself, Professor Layton and the Unwound Future. I haven't played that much of the original one that I bought, but I'm I really liked it. I really liked the puzzle element, and uh, this is the third game in the series, I think. Also brand new, so the Club Nintendo code will be there. Looking forward to beating the the first one and then getting into that one. Uh, for the Wii, I picked up Ivy the Kiwi. Uh, question mark? That's there. Uh, Play, play control is a lot like uh, Kirby's uh, Canvas Curse. Uh, the thing moves by itself, and then you have to draw lines to guide it through the level. Uh, very, re really, very, very cool art style that this thing has. So, uh, again, for the price that I got, I wasn't going to pass up on a new Wii game. Uh, picked up 
finally Sonic Colors. I don't own any of the Sonic games on the Wii, which bugs me. But uh, this one appears to be the best of the bunch. I want to get also Sonic Unleashed. Not so much for the werewolf, but because of the platforming. And uh, really, really glad I picked this one up. And the last one I picked up is Lego Batman 2 DC Super Heroes. Uh, considered by some the best of the Lego games. And I like the first one, and I'm looking forward to playing this one. Because you, you play with Batman and the whole DC Super Heroes. So, and everything's voiced. It no longer just moves. It, it's voiced. So, They had a whole bunch of PlayStation 3 games, but my PlayStation 3 broke, so I didn't see the point of buying that. But actually, I, I do regret not picking up at least three PlayStation 3 games that they also had really cheap, but, you know. Uh, picked up the original Freaky Friday. I've never seen this, but it stars Jodie Foster and in one of her earlier roles, and uh, I've only seen the Lindsay Lohan remake, so I picked this one up because I wanted to see the original so I can compare it to the remake. Uh, speaking of Lise, Lindsay Lohan, a little bit after she did The Parent Trap, um, she did a, a, a movie that I remember seeing once with my mom on TV, and that's Life Size. Uh, Lindsay Lohan's character's mom dies, so she finds a book of magic, but she accidentally, accidentally brings life to a Barbie doll that turns into Tyra Banks. So now uh, this doll doesn't know anything about the, the world and... Uh, Lindsay Lohan kind of has to guide her, but she doesn't want the responsibility. Yeah, I remember it with being a very interesting movie. A movie I'm really happy to add to my collection, because this is the version that I've been holding out on, is the Two Disc Collector's Edition of The Devil's Rejects. Uh, by far Rob Zombie's best movie, uh, followed by the Halloween remake. Uh, really, really good movie. I really like it, and this edition comes with a buttload of extra features and a 144 minute long documentary so I'm a huge extra feature mark so yeah and it's the unrated version so yeah <laughs> looking forward to watching all them all them special features uh, picked up always on the lookout for anime so I picked up Excel Saga Volume 2 really good parody anime anime the animation is really good and the parodies that they do to uh, normal movie or anime tropes is really cool. Um, I know these are out of print, and I don't know if I'll be able to track down the remaining four volumes, but I'm hoping I can, because I really like Excel Saga. Uh, picked up, finally, a copy of Almost Famous. I've uh, been meaning to get to this movie, but uh, I finally found it at a good price. And in a good condition, because the copies I've seen are always scratched up. Uh, I'm trying to build a Michael Douglas and Brittany Murphy collection. So I picked up Don't Say a Word, brand new, still sealed, with a slipcase that I've never seen before. So, uh, yeah, I remember this being a not a good thriller, but it was good enough. And again, it, it adds to my Michael Douglas and Brittany Murphy collection, so... That's pretty cool. Um, I needed this one to complete my collection. But it's referenced in the newer one. So I had to pick it up. And that's T Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, Turtles in Time. Uh, in the TMNT, the animated movie, the scepter is there. And uh, I should love this movie because it's set in Japan. And I'm a huge fan of Japan and the samurai period. But when you're talking about the turtles, you expect something from the TV show, or I don't hate it as much as other people, but it's definitely the weakest of the turtles movie, uh, and the costumes are not good. They're they're cheaper somehow. And the last movie I picked up is a 007 movie starring Roger Moore for Your Eyes Only, which I don't remember watching. Uh, I'm on the lookout for uh, Octopussy for uh, the Roger Moore collection. Uh, there's 23 James Bond movies with this one. I own like 11. So I'm still missing a couple. But uh, yeah, this was cool. And it comes with the insert. So yeah, I haven't seen it, but I'm looking forward to watching it. So yeah, that was the collection pick-up video. Lots of stuff to talk about. Um... 
Movie-wise, the standout gems, I'm going to go with the 